Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel, hello to the chicas and the chicos. Um, as you may have noticed on the channel uh, recently, we have had a few updates, in particular in the department of um, thumbnails. Um, a lovely, lovely person called Funky T, who is a follower of the stream, which is where we are right now, um, offered his uh, voluntary help. Um, to sort out my thumbnails and um, he has been doing some amazing, absolutely amazing stuff. And actually he has made the thumbnail that is attached to this video, which is uh, a reference to the fact that uh, we have crossed the 300 videos on this channel, which I wasn't even aware of. And uh, since Funky T, this absolute genius and very generous soul is working for me for absolutely free of charge, which is just pure insanity, especially considering the quality of work he does. I was thinking about how I could pay him back for his kindness and the idea was that, um, well I just realized that uh, he did make this thumbnail but I actually didn't request this particular one, he just made it because A, he is awesome and two because uh, he thought how cool it was that it was my 300th video. So I thought, hang on a second, why don't I make a video about the thumbnail? And so for the first and probably last time in the history of my YouTubing, I'm actually going to put the cart before the horse and uh, make a video purely about um, the thumbnail and since the thumbnail is featuring a very strong Spartan theme which is very close to my heart for various reasons I thought why don't we talk about Spartan chess and so Spartan chess is going to be on the menu today and I thought that actually this analogy is quite fitting in many many ways because the way how I picture the Spartan warfare is uh, that it's first of all based on sound preparation, it's based on very good understanding of military strategy, it's based on uncompromising full-on battle, pretty much the very thing that I swear by in chess. And so I thought okay I will deliver some recent games and some not so recent ones, some played by me, some not, in the spirit of Spartan chess. Um, I will start off with a little bit of a mockery um, in that uh, this particular game I'm showing you, this was a bullet, but it showcases a really, really awesome mate. And so I thought, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, after all, this uh, this is all a, a little bit of a funsies sake. So let, let's do that. E4, G6, D4, Bishop, G7, Knight, C3 and H4. Only forward, my friends, just like the Spartans, there is no taking a step backwards. Knight d7, already an iffy move, by the way. H5, c5, d5. Forward, my friends, forward. Forward, that's uh, the motto. Knight f6, another bad move. And uh, after h6, my opponent is very severely already on the back foot because uh, development is going to be a major problem and in relation to that also king's safety. So I played knight f3, a6 happened, a4 happened, rook b8. This is already a sign that uh, the opponent is massively in struggle town because b5 is not really a move that can be executed. Bishop f4, lining the bishop up with the rook, preparing for e5 because chess is played in the center when it's played well. b5, desperation, pawn sack, take, take, take. Bishop b7, and the Spartan army breaks through right in the middle of the board. Bang on e5, awesomeness. Takes, knight takes, and now it is really... Uh, terrible already for black because this diagonal is on, this pin is on. Wow, look at the diagonal I just drew from f3 to b8. Um, so yeah, black is beyond saving, but uh, luckily we managed to find uh, a beautiful finish here. Queen b6, knight c4, grabbing a, queen, a tempo on the queen and grabbing a tempo on the bishop. And here it's a very important theme and all, once again I don't want to sound childish by analyzing a bullet game. But uh, irrespective of the quality of uh, the play, it's very important to not to get tempted and grab silly material that is absolutely meaningless in the context. So here the opponent is absolutely on the ropes. They can hardly move, right? So if I take this, I essentially ease their pain. Instead, I played queen e2, announcing knight d6 mate. 
which is almost impossible to stop because the knight is pinned. I mean, the queen can go, but it will be lost. So, yeah, like, this is just so much more oomph to the position and we retain the original threat. And, oh my god, the whole idea that I'm doing now has been ruined because the very person I'm recording this video for has just tuned into the chat. So, welcome to Funky T. This was my... Uh, intended surprise for you that I will make a video for the 300 uh, thumbnail that you have just made. All right, so rook c8 and 96 delivered a really awesome mate, a typical uncompromising fight in the style of the Spartan warriors. Now let's see what it looks like in a. Uh... Oh no! I didn't bring over that game. Ouch. Okay, give me a sec. Um, I shall do that in a second. Um, here we go. Okay, no, not quite. This is another one. This is going to be the next one I'm going to show you. But first, let's have a look at another game of mine. Hmm. No. Yeah, okay, good. Riade. Here we go. Alright, I really enjoyed this. This is a recent Blitz game that I played against a uh, um, an international master from Myanmar. And this variation actually has yielded me a lot of very easy victories. And this is where sometimes knowing theory that goes really far in uh, is well worth really remembering. Because here in this Richter Rouser, I played uh, Queen D2, which is a thematic mainline. F4 takes, takes, queen a5, e5. So this is the big, big main line here. Takes, takes, bishop, uh, sorry, takes, takes, e6. Bishop c6, I have won about 10 games of various uh, time controls. It's a blunder. The idea is the same that I can't take here because the bishop drops off. But here after b4, the queen is forced off the fifth rank and we win a piece. e6 is the correct move because now b4 has been denied. Castles, bishop c6, I still can't take because of the bishop hanging, so bishop, knight b5, bishop b5 is also theory, but knight b5 is an excellent move here, once again, Spartan chess boys, we're not moving a thing backwards, going forward, no compromise. And the idea is that when the bishop takes, uh, which it has done, then the fifth rank is blocked, so now I can take f6. Now the bishop goes back to c6. Uh, I don't know why, but my chess uh, player layout has gone wonky. Bishop c6. Hanging the bishop with check. Pawn h4 defends it. g6. Bishop c4. And now black really needs to be careful with his king. So he plays queen c5. It's a mistake. The correct opening theory here is bishop c5. And then uh, after queen g4, h5, queen e2... Um, castles king side that's uh, mainline theory there um, my opponent played queen c5 I pulled the queen back because we are not trading queens we are going for mate baby b5 bishop back a5 and here just so that I convey some real educational value and content too I would recommend you to, to consider the position as such if you are a player who in this position goes like this, uh-oh, a4 is threatened, I better do something about it, and then play a move like a3 or c3 or any of the above, then you need a complete rewiring of your priority system in your chess. Because what's going on on the board is that white has a fully developed army, black has got three pieces out, a king stuck in the middle, and it's not even close to castling. What that means is that black shouldn't be able to create meaningful threats. Matter of fact, this move for a more seasoned player would come like a, that's a blunder. Because he's not developing, he's already behind, he's still delaying it even further, I'm looking for a kill. And that is the mindset that is the correct one. Let's call it the Spartan mindset for today's sake. Um, and so we go rookie one. And uh, this is just absolute carnage right here, right now. 
um, my opponent, he realized that uh, things were looking rather, rather pear-shaped and played the defensive queen f5. For the record, um, yeah, queen f5, offering another queen trade. And at this point, I realized that I had a beautiful uh, motive that I really, really liked. And that was uh, that after queen takes f5, um, Foca Ferra Facerita, thank you for the follow. If they take back, I had this absolutely awesome rook takes e6 move. And that is why I even considered the queen trade, otherwise I wouldn't have. But I saw that here rook takes e6 is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous move, which is based on the idea that after takes, bishop takes, if the rook goes to c7 to prevent f7 mate, which was what I expected, then I would have f7 check, rook takes f7 and rook d8 mate. Which would have called for a whoop whoop, where is the roof? Spartan style warriors don't go backwards, they just go for the mate. Because the ultimate goal is to win the battle, not to, not to lose pieces. And the Spartans were actually pretty spot on with that. They were more than willing to sacrifice some of their own, or themselves rather, is a better way to put it, for the sake of a winning battle or a winning war even. So here rook takes e6 is the smallest possible price to pay for this amazing outcome that uh, we just rolled in with mate. My opponent spotted this, so he left his rook hanging, which I took, and then a couple of moves later uh, he got mated anyway. After king f8, rook d8 check, he actually re resigned and gave up. Now, speaking about uncompromising uh, style and... Um, knowing your openings really well i wanted to present to you a game on the black side of this business too because um it's pretty cool when you see same concepts uh, explained on both sides so here black is playing the botvinnik variation and back in the day it wasn't quite clear that in this position the best for black is knight d7 the old main line was bishop e7 and so what we went into this take take queen takes g3 knight a6 bishop g2 bishop b7 quite similar to the main line really but this knight is awfully misplaced compared to the main line where the knight is here and the queen is here a4 castles i mean what is not spartan chess if not this like he just plays a4 announcing his intentions to destroy the queen side and we go like yep bring it on baba that is just the absolute embodiment, the living statue of uncompromising, virtuous, vicious warrior style of chess. Takes, takes, knight b5, knight b, no, e5 first, actually, sorry. Counterattacking the center. It looks hopeless for black, but it's very sharp. And uh, sharp is good. d5, knight b4 now, intending to go in with mate. And this is actually a losing move but it's very difficult to see how like the computer points it out to you very quickly that after rook a7 king he queen a4 knight check he queen takes and then king c3 white is winning and then it changes its mind because it's fine the pair finds a pair but your check here so as i can probably convince you things are nowhere near as clear as may they may appear at first sight and so why i thought okay why don't i just castle out of this mess and take it from here and here came the shocking revelation queen h6 and white resigned yep you heard that right white resigned and the reason why it is so cool is because um it's just so un unexpected that here there is a forced mate or white loses significant material because the main point is that h4 is met by a truly amazing spartan kick in the chest queen takes h4 and upon taking there is check and then there is checkmate wowzers man like when i found this game i went like ah this would be a good one for mr 300 Baby, imagine pulling this off. Queen here and then queen h4. This is Sparta. Now, the refutation. Check this out. Check here. Castles. And if I do the same thing, it's so beautiful. And this is just 
Mm. This is why I love chess, man. Check. Oh no, it's not here. I thought that was it. No, sorry. First h4, queen h4. And then check. That's it. That's it. That's it, papa. And now if they go here, we come in with mate. Right? He, he, check, take, checkmate. Thank you very much for coming. So obviously after the check, we go here, right? Hoping for perpetual. No, 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 no. Now Y just takes and there is no mate because the rook covers the G8 square. What? Like, wowzers, man. That is counter Spartan. Like, that is when two Spartans fight. That's like Spartan training. So, long story short, um, Funky T is an absolute legend. Unfortunately, he's hearing it live as I'm saying these words, but that's okay. Uh, and this video is purely dedicated to his generosity and his amazing skill set. But also, I would like to celebrate a little bit here because 300 videos is uh, a substantial amount, I guess. Um, so I hope that we continue growing and uh, I hope to see you guys at the 500th video with an equally fitting celebration. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.